Hi, this is Erica Awakening from SpiritualSeduction.com. I'm the founder of a revolutionary system for transforming your beliefs called Holistic Belief Reprogramming. It's called HBR for short. I've combined a lot of methodologies as well as my own um, different methods that I've developed myself over my years of experience with my clients and myself. And this is the fastest method I know of on the planet right now for changing your life at a very deep level very quickly. Today I want to talk to you about a subject that is sensitive for a lot of people. And because it's sensitive, this actually makes it even more important that we talk about it honestly. And the topic is healing your broken relationship with money. So I... Um, I get a, a, a lot of different people coming to my website and my Facebook pages and I get to be exposed to people from all walks of life in this business and one of the things that actually really breaks my heart and um, that's why I'm creating this video today is to see people not getting the support and the help that they need to change their life because they have limiting beliefs about money. And so they will, they will show up and they'll say, oh, I can't afford this. I can't afford your rates. I can't afford to go to workshops. I can't afford to learn how to do this. Well, <laughs> the truth is you can't afford not to learn how to do this. Uh, if you learn these basic skills that I teach to all of my clients, you're going to have more money than you know what to do with. But if you don't learn these skills, you're basically going to condemn yourself to an entire lifetime of can't afford. Now some of you may be thinking, oh well, this coach has a lot of money and she can't relate to my situation. So I want to share a little bit about my background so that you realize that in fact I do understand the can't afford mentality. In fact, I grew up with it. I grew up in what I call a can't afford family. And what I mean by that is that whenever I would ask my parents for something, um, the example that comes to mind is, is piano lessons, which I really, really wanted when I was about maybe seven or eight years old. And I went to my mom and I was so excited about this and I asked, I, I had, you know, played around on a piano at, at a church retreat or something like that. And so I asked if I could start taking piano lessons. And what was the response? Well, the response was, no, we can't afford a piano. We can't afford lessons. And if we give you what you want, your brothers are going to have to sacrifice and there won't be enough money to go around, blah, 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 blah. All right? It's a very guilt-based, scarcity-based mentality towards money. And that's the conditioning that I got from my family for my entire childhood. And we really just barely had the bare necessities of life. We weren't starving, but there were many months in which um, the food got real low towards the end of the month. And my mother would tell us that we couldn't go grocery shopping until the next paycheck came in. And there was even one really scary time when both of my parents got laid off at the same time, within about two weeks of each other. And at that point, the fears were getting even to the point of just pure survival and, you know, whether we're going to be able to stay living in our home and so forth. So I want you to understand that I do understand what it's like to not have money. And it, I do understand how painful it is because it was really painful. Uh, playing piano is something I would have loved to do. And I didn't get to start at, a, at an early age to be able to really turn that into a passion. Um, but there were many other things that I wanted and I could say even needed that were not available to me. Now the difference between me and a lot of people is that I made a decision very early on, probably when I was a teenager, that this living with this kind of pain with money was not okay. It was, um, it affected every single facet of our lives. And I made a decision. I said to myself, and I remember this very, very strongly, that no matter what it takes, 
when I am an adult and I have the freedom to choose, I'm going to have enough money and I'm not going to worry about money. And I made that decision within myself. When I went to college, that led me to get a job waiting tables three or four nights a week while I was in school because it was important to me to be able to go to parties and events that I otherwise, quote unquote, can't afford. Now, again, when I got out of college, I had more decisions to make. And one of those was I went to law school. Now, because of my family situation, there wasn't any money to go to law school. And my parents contributed exactly zero dollars to me going to law school. So I had to make a decision. And the decision was, am I going to let that stop me from having this opportunity in life? Or am I going to find a way to do this anyway? And what I did was, I mean, I don't remember the actual dollar figures, but I think it was probably more than $100,000 for those three years of law school. And I made the decision to, to take loans out, a very large amount of loans in order to pay for me to have that opportunity. Now, I didn't see that as, I don't like to be in debt. I'm not a fan of debt at all. But it was important to me to invest in myself. So I did. And um, it, wasn't, it wasn't very long after law school, actually, before that investment did, in fact, pay for itself. So it's not like I ended up worse off for doing it. And so I just really want to emphasize the importance of investing in ourselves. It's a way of building a better future than the past that we had. And I do understand when people say there's not enough money, believe me, I've been there. I understand. There were ski trips and all kinds of fun things I didn't do my first year of college until I got that job because there was just no way those 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 dollar numbers were going to, you know, ends were going to meet. So I, I tell you all this mostly so that you understand that I'm not like coming from some wealthy background where I don't understand what it's like. And also to really uh, emphasize the importance of just making a decision and a commitment within yourself, within your heart, that if you have been living in scarcity your whole life, it, this doesn't have to continue. You can make a new decision right now and your life can change completely. So I want to invite you right now in this moment while you're watching this video, and I'm actually going to do some tapping with you in a moment that will help facilitate this. But I really, I'm going to invite you to, to really check in with your heart and make a commitment about this, that, that the world is a place of infinite abundance. As Wayne Dyer once said, uh, <laughs> the ocean of abundance is waiting for you there. And you could go to that ocean of abundance with a thimble and just dip your little thimble in the water and say, oh, that's all there seems to be for me in this world. I guess I've just got to take what I get. Or you can go to that ocean of abundance with a dump truck and you can fill it up over and over again and it's never going to run out. It's a constantly replenishing supply. You can get into the flow of, of money the same way you can get into the flow of love, the same way you could get in the flow of healing. And by the way, the techniques that I'm going to show you, I've used to heal my own body. I used to have several chronic conditions, which are gone now. And that's what I mean by getting in the flow of the, of the, um, of the healing or the love or the whatever it is, right? It could even be getting in the flow of sex, all right? It can be anything in life. There's a flow to it. And it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. You want to get in that flow and enjoy the flow. So um, I also want to share with you a couple of success stories of my own. I mean, I've helped many, many of my clients attract uh, a lot more financial abundance. That's why I say that my coaching pays for itself. But I'll share two of my own personal examples. Um, one is that I rent out this house that I'm sitting in right now. And I used the techniques that I'm about to show you to increase the rental income on this house about 65%. And I did that right in the middle of the recession. 
So while other houses in the area were not getting rentals and were actually having a decline in rental income, mine went up 65%. And the, really the only thing that I changed in that time period in any significant way was that I started tapping on my beliefs around the situation. I tapped on my beliefs about the economy, about how much people would be willing to pay. I really got myself in touch with the value that I was giving to the people, and um, lo and behold, it, it, it started uh, really booming. And then the other example is my business, my coaching business. Again, in the middle of the recession, when everyone else is saying, oh, it's just a terrible time to start a business and so forth, I started a business and I didn't have any business experience. I didn't go to any business classes. I didn't, you know, other than the very bare minimum of teaching, I didn't really, I didn't read any books. Um, I didn't go to marketing school. I just followed my intuition and did a lot of HBR. And the next thing I know, I got a six figure income coming in from this business. And this is meanwhile, all these people are saying, oh, the economy's so bad and it's impossible and I can't do it and blah, blah, blah. And again, it's like, it's the difference between my parents' mentality when I was growing up, which was so disempowered. And I love my parents, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but it was a very disempowered scarcity mindset that they taught us. And a different mindset, which you have the choice to, to, to bring into your life which is to say, I can do this. The, the external world has no power to hold me back from doing this. And if I make a decision within myself, I can have whatever I want. So I'm going to do, I'm gonna actually try a little, bring a little humor into the tapping today, um, to tap on your broken relationship with money. And uh, I'll tap on some common limiting beliefs. Now I'm just gonna say that you know, doing gen general free tap-alongs is great. I mean, it's good to to learn about particular coaches and practitioners and get a little bit of a taste of it. However, I will also say that I've never gotten big results from tapping along with a pre-arranged uh, script. Now, sometimes it does happen, but usually what's going on for you with money is actually very, very specific. It usually is rooted in some memories from your childhood, like, like my piano example. And if you don't go and get some help and get some support and actually have a coach help you customize the, the coaching to your particular situation, it's not as likely that you're going to be able to get these kind of spectacular results. Now, I did get spectacular results for myself um, with the two examples that I gave you. But I had gone and worked with a lot of coaches and healers before that so that I, I was really knew what I was doing by then. And also, um, I have someone I tap with regularly. So I still even now am getting this support. And I just encourage everyone, you know, stop being a stoic. <laughs> stop trying to do this by yourself. There's a big world out there of people who are all here as a network to support each other. All right, enough of my lecturing. Um, I'm going to start with uh, Karate Chop, and we're going to bring some humor into this because that's how we're going to heal this broken relationship with money. <laughs> 